Hi, and welcome to Smashing App. Today is a really exciting episode for the Festival of Learning from Apple, and it's all about accessibility on the iPad. Now, you may have been joining me in the last couple of days to learn about creativity and about coding, and if you have, I'm sorry you've got more of my face again tonight. Um, but if you haven't seen those two, obviously I'll link them down below because that's what you have to do on YouTube. Um, but tonight is going to be all about accessibility tips from educators all across the UK and Ireland. And we're going to do it in a really fast-paced format to give you lots of ideas to help make your devices more accessible to teachers and learners in your settings. I'm delighted to say that I'm joined first of all by Martin Coots up in Aberdeenshire, and he's going to share his favourite tip for accessibility on the iPad. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Jacob, and hello to everybody uh, for this festival learning session. Um, the feature that I want to talk about um, with you all just now isn't necessarily a built-in accessibility feature, but it is a feature that can enable all learners to achieve, even believe, and, and match up with their strengths. As we know, the beauty of accessibility tools and how those tools actually come together is enabling learners to, you know, match up with how they are, you know, with, with their own individual learning style, whether that be a specific educational need or whether it's even something like English as an additional language. And that's a, a, a kind of a, a smashing app feature I want to show you just now. So if I switch uh, my camera open, I actually have a document that, um, you know, say for example, it could take me to, it could take me to, um, it could scan that QR code and take me to uh, the, the digital version of this. But oh, as you can see, it's got the little yellow cursors because it's picking up text. So I could say, right, as a as a uh, child, I may be struggling with picking up what this means. So without even taking the picture, I'm using the little live text button that's at the side here. And what I can do is I could copy that text. Then if I want to figure out exactly what this means, because English is not necessarily my, uh, my, my first language, I could open up the built-in Apple Translate app. And I've got it set here to English, and maybe I'm uh, a Vietnamese speaker, uh, a native Vietnamese speaker, and I want to hear and understand what those words actually mean. So let's paste in the text. I should have picked it up. If it hasn't, let's go back quickly. I need to highlight it again. There we go. Let's paste it in. That's better. Tap my arrow down the bottom. And as you can see, by using my iPad's camera, almost like a viewfinder, I've picked up the text from a document. This could be an in-class worksheet. This could be an instruction on the board. This could be a, a poster on the wall. And I can then hear, at, so I'm using the call, but I could hear that spoken aloud. I could copy this. I could get the additional uh, information. I can find out the meaning. And it starts to build that level of deeper understanding for a learner, whether it is a learner with an additional support need that is maybe needing to um, look and hear that text being uh, spoken aloud using the speak selection, or whether it's a child with an additional, uh, with English as, a, as an additional language, they can get the picture of that text, paste it into the Translate app, and hear it spoken aloud in their native language to allow that deeper understanding and enable that breadth, depth, and challenge that we know all students are looking for and strive for when they have when they have that opportunity in class. So that is a very very quick um, smashing apps kind of conversation there, uh, Jacob, about using the the live text, the built-in live text system-wide feature for I think it's all iPads ninth generation and up, and the built-in Translate app that is available across all. Uh, devices and uh, versions of iOS and iPad OS. Thank you so much. That's a really brilliant overview there of a very powerful feature. And like you say, you're combining two system features to get a really, a really helpful result for those students. It will really benefit people perhaps who aren't native English speakers, or perhaps who do want that to be you know, read aloud to them using the Siri voice. And I know we couldn't demo it there because of the Zoom recording, but it will obviously speak it out loud to you and you know, it does a very good job. It's not all robotic and horrible sounding. It's it's very good. Yeah, I think I think with the new voices with speak selection certainly from from our point of view up here and in, in the in almost like the Great White North, the fact that we have Hades or Fiona 
now we have that Scottish voice. So, yes. you know, if, if, if we do have pupils that have a, a specific uh, comprehension issue where they need to hear the text, and as, as, as uh, a fellow lady Sadie had said, when technology is used to benefit everyone, everyone benefits. You know, so when you when you think about everybody being able to to achieve based on any learning style or any ability level, using technology to harness that uh, skill and raise that confidence mm -hmm. in them, that to me is accessibility, not just uh, an assistive technology need. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. And thank you for taking the time today to share that with us. We're going to head down to England now and we're going to join Emma and we'll see what she has to share. Right, so next up, we're joined by Emma from Titchfield on the south coast of England. Emma, welcome to Smashing Apps, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you've got to share today. Hello, Jacob. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm going to get straight into it using the accessibility feature, which is the magnifying tool, the magnifier. And three ways to find it on my iPad. Um, first way is I've got it as one of my icons in the control panel and in control center by swapping down in the top right corner. And there it is. It's the little magnifying glass with the plus sign inside. I can also just swipe down on my home screen and type in magnifier. When you, the, the whole purpose of the magnifier is to to sort of use it as a hyper zoom camera. It allows color filters to be applied in the moment as opposed to sort of adding them via filters through editing an image that has already been taken. And when you want to select the object you want to zoom in on, so for example, I've got this little Tintin book. It's very small, the text is small, and I can hover over it and just by holding the camera over the text, I can zoom in. So this is the most sort of basic feature. Like I said, okay. sort of a hyper zoom. Yeah. And you can see it is a little bit wobbly. So what I can do is take a photo of that. So I've got two options now. So by pressing the little shutter button, I can take a photograph of it. And with that photo, I can then start using some of the tools underneath the zoom button there. So. The first one is actually a way to flip the camera. So if I want to use the front camera, I can, but I'm not doing that right now, but I can change the brightness. By making the brightness go away to choose another tool, I just tap on it again. I can change the contrast. And this is, this is just wonderful. This is where we can change the filters to suit the needs of, of the child using the iPad or whoever's using it. Uh, okay. We can move across to the different filters that will suit the needs of the children. So you can put these overlays on and so on. So you can go through. If you tap on the little filter button again, also what we can do um, is use this detection tool here. So I've taken my photo of the text, I've applied the filters. Now with the iPad Pro or the iPhone Pro, you can use these really awesome detection settings. Um, my iPad unfortunately isn't a Pro, so the detection settings aren't quite up there yet. But if you can see, as I move the iPad around the room, as so if I point it to my window, let me get it into a different filter. Wow. Can you see it's trying to label yeah. everything that it sees? Wow. And if, you, if you've got the voice over feature on, it will also read those words to you. So voiceover can also Gosh. be found in accessibility features. Or oh, you get to see my my washing dryer <laughs> today. <laughs> <laughs> Super. Um, so yes, yeah, so we can do all of that in, in action mode almost. So we don't have to take the photo or the video first. Yeah. Um, we can do it live. We can also take a video though and then edit that video so by tapping on view we can see the video uh, the photo sorry and then we can apply the photos afterwards as you would sort of in this ah, okay you can either do it while you're taking the photo or after you've taken the little image yeah. um something to bear in mind is that once you've taken the image, it doesn't automatically save in photos. So you have to decide whether you want to keep it or not. If you do want to keep it, then you press that export button 
in the uh, top right yeah. corner and save it to your camera roll. Okay, save it to photos that way. And it will go in. Fantastic. Um, something else which is, you know, another benefit of using this tool is in the classroom, maybe the teacher's modeling something on the computer, um, um, on the screen at the front of the class, mm -hmm. what the child could do is actually take a screen recording using the filters. Um, yes. So for example, I can put the filter on that I need. What I'm going to do is just turn off that. There we go. I've got the filter I need. I can direct the camera at the screen and then take a recording of my teacher demonstrating or modeling something on the board yeah. um, using screen recording to record it. Um, and I've got that for later, uh, for future reference yeah. as well. So it's just another That's little trick. Brilliant. Um, Magnify can be used as this in, as part of split screen as well. So you can take a photo of something, zoom right into it, and then type up into you know another app next door um, as you're working. So I think it's really useful. I think that's brilliant, Emma. Thank you so much for sharing. And I think yeah, the, the quality of the image when you're zoomed in is actually really clear. It's really easy to Durian. read. And Durian. the fact it doesn't save it to the camera roll, I feel like that's quite an advantage, actually, because otherwise you're going to get hundreds of pictures of things that you photographed. But actually, when you use it on a day-to-day -day basis, you don't necessarily want everything saved. I think no, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But I just think those filters are so powerful. Yes. Um, it can suit a range of students in the classroom. And Whoa. doing it in that split screen mode, that's a great idea. I've never considered that before, but you could then have the best of both worlds, couldn't you? You could have it, you know, you could be typing on one side, like you say. Emma, that's and fantastic, and thank you for taking the time to share that. I really do appreciate it, and hopefully lots yes. of people will see this and think, I'm going to give Magnify a chance. So thank Good you very much. We'll see you again soon. Thanks, Jacob. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so now we're going to head up towards Wigan, uh, where we're going to meet Chris Lawson, a good friend of mine, and he is going to share his favourite tip for accessibility on the iPads. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, Jacob. Yeah, this is a really important accessibility feature, close to my heart and also that of my learners in my class. So we're going to take a look today in a moment at an accessibility feature called Colour Filters. And it can be used in two different ways. The first way it can be used is for any children or adults who are colourblind and it allows overlays to be placed onto the screen, which doesn't work on the screen recording. So I should have to show it with the old fashioned hands up. That's all right. um, and the second overlay is um, actually really useful for people with dyslexia. So you can actually place an overlay of the cyan color or the green or the red, whichever works best um, to basically help and enable people to be able to read easier. Um, and for myself with dyslexia, I find it really, really useful. And especially if I'm working for a long period of time, um, I certainly like to add the overlay on. So I'm going to show it straight away. So heading, uh, do we see? There we go. Yep, perfect. So heading <laughs> straight, look at that. So heading straight over into the accessibility features and going to display and text size is where we need to go. There'll then be towards the bottom, the little one which call, is called color filters. So tapping on color filters will bring you to a screen that looks something like this. Okay. And then, and then once you select the colour filter on, you'll see that the screen has changed colour now um, and it's changed its hue. And this is where I'm in at the moment. I'll change the intensity just so you can really see it on the screen um, whilst we're recording. And you can see that you can choose the different colour. And these are all really useful for people with dyslexia mostly um, because it enables them to focus in on the content a little bit more. However, there are then four other features. There's one which is grayscale, which is really useful for people who find colour overwhelming. And then the three, and it's literally like magic, um, <laughs> is for Protopia, um, for be, if you're Protan or if you're Deuteran or if you're Triton, the three types of colour blindness. Um, if you select that and change the intensity, it will allow the um, user to basically be able to identify the colours a lot easier. So if you're red-green colour blind, as an example, to someone who can see the colours, they go, absolutely, there's no way that that's going to help in any way, shape or form. Yeah. Uh, but it actually, it really does. And the way that wow. I've actually used this is I've used this colour filter on one of the colour blindness tests. And then when the child says, oh, I can't see that one, we then go and put the filter on. And then if they can see it, we know that we've got the right one for them. And if they come with a diagnosis of it, even better. So it is absolutely insane. Um, and to the non-colour blind people out there, um, it makes it really clear 
and obvious that it's changed, but for someone with color blindness, it really is an accessibility feature. And the only thing I would say is, you know, statistics are one in 12 boys are colorblind and one in 200 women or girls are colorblind. And that to me is insane when you think you might have a class of 30, but likelihood is you've probably got two boys who are colorblind in that class. Yeah. Um, my class now, I do have three, so booking the trend. Um, and, and for me, that iPad is enabling them and helping them to access the curriculum a lot easier. Do you know what, Chris, I think that's such a valuable tip. And for the sake of literally flicking one switch on, that's such a transformative experience for those children, isn't it? Particularly, you know, like you say, with dyslexia, dyscalculia, and then the colorblindness angle as well. Yeah, and you know, Jacob, I think it's as simple as when we say, all right, what I want you to do is I want you to um, shade um, the circles, or I want you to shade the area in red, and I want you to outline it in blue or green. Well, the child doesn't know which is which. Uh, so all of a sudden they might be getting a question wrong when the mathematical knowledge is absolutely there they've just selected the wrong color so for me you know i've seen i've seen genuine amazing faces of children when we first turn that feature on because they then feel like they can access that curriculum Um, and they love it when their friends look at it and they're like what on earth that looks ridiculous Um, and they're like no no because it's literally helping me learn yeah that's fantastic and so when it comes to the the hue and stuff as well, I guess the child can be empowered to choose the hue that perhaps works better for them. I know in our in our classroom in the past, we've had like colour plastic strips that go over the textbook and they're very limited in terms of the colours you can use. But with this, I guess you can choose the exact shade that, that works best. The exact shade, but also the intensity as well. So you can have like a deep cyan, or you could have quite a, like a, a light cyan and, and that really can help as well um, to reduce. It's basically the dyslexia, it's the visual strain which is being reduced as a result. Uh, and again, when we might be talking about, you know, I'm a year six teacher coming up to SATs and we're doing lots of reading, yeah. you know, being able to reduce that visual stress is so, so important for them. It's just a shame they can't use the iPad in the in the test. But maybe in years to come, maybe uh, in the teaching agency if you're listening to, to this video. <laughs> You know, yeah, that for me is is such an enabler, Jacob. And of course, I guess it's a feature you can use on iPhone as well as iPad. So if their children have got devices at home, they may not know this is a possibility until they use it in school. And then that's transformative at home as well. Absolutely. And on to and Mac OS as well, there's an opportunity to use it there and, and utilize it there as well, which is, is incredibly powerful. Brilliant. Chris, thank you so much for sharing that. And we're Pleasure. going to have Scotland now to speak to Martin. Um, and through the magic of editing, you'll be gone and he'll be here. So thank you very much. Fantastic. Chris. Bye-bye now. Bye. We're now joined by Martin in Edinburgh, and Martin is a good friend of mine. He's going to share his top tip for accessibility. So, Martin, welcome to Smashing Apps. Hi, Jacob. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Not too bad, not too bad. Looking forward to this. Excellent. I'm looking forward to seeing what you've got to share today. Okay. So, I just wanted to share a couple of quite simple tips, but ones that have had a huge impact in my classroom over the years. Um, Assistive touch function which is a setting that can be turned on within the touch menu of accessibility. Okay. And by turning it on, it gives me this floating button that in its first type, um, case is just useful to have for when I'm presenting and airplane my screen to the class, ah, just yes. to be able to show students what I'm referring to and what I'm talking about. However, what I found over time is actually it's a really useful thing for me to get all my streets to switch on. So it's not something that I just get um, certain students to use that all my students are used to having uh, access to on their iPad. And okay. this makes lots of different functions much easier. Yeah. Especially in school setting where we like to put our iPads into cases that can sometimes be quite difficult to handle for young children or yeah. children with um, restricted fine motor skills and things like that. Having this floating button allows them to access a menu of options very quickly. So for example, I tap on it, you can see it's given me shortcuts to things like my notification center or my control center. And the beauty of the assistive touch button is that you can customize this menu. If I go into customize top level menu, I can have up to eight icons within that menu. I can have what almost whatever I fancy there. One that I find really useful, especially for younger students, is the screenshot option. Oh, okay. We all, we all know how difficult some yes. learners find it to hold yeah. those two buttons simultaneously, especially if they've got a big chunky case on their iPad. So that button there, I've just added it to my accessibility menu. And now, when I tap on screenshot, 
it just takes that screenshot instantly and saves it to my camera roll. Wow. And they still, they still get the little clicking noise so they know it's worked. And there's a whole host of different shortcuts I can use here. Um, things like locking the screen, unlocking the screen, um, returning to home quickly, um, restarting the iPad, which is quite a useful one for those um, bug fixing moments in classrooms where they struggle with that long, long press reset. Um, but if you can imagine something your students may be struggling with in terms of an accessibility feature, um, it's a really quick way to give them access to those tools. Wow, Martin, I I bought the first iPad in Cornwall when it came out, however many years ago that was, 10, 12 years ago, and I've been using iPad every single day, and I did not know you could customise that menu. So you were able to customise it originally. It's quite a, it's a relatively new update. You weren't, I know that. Like I'm right saying, you weren't originally able to customise it. Okay. Certainly in the last few years, you have. Martin, that's such a helpful tip. Thank you. You genuinely taught me something new there as well. You mentioned that you teach this to your children when they first start using the iPad and it's per a normal part of iPad life for them. What sort of like menu options do they find most useful and why do you feel that's so important to get them all using an early age? So what I like about the assistive touch tip is that it is something that I can introduce on day one when we first bring iPads into our youngest classrooms and it normalizes the idea of using that yes. um, accessibility menu rather than only being something that's required by some it's something that can benefit everybody um and they do genuinely find it helpful Thanks. so things like being able to take a screenshot or being able to access the camera really quickly or if we have a quick look at the the menu here um one that i really like is the app switcher oh yes i activate that I just show you my device. It very quickly gives me that view of all the apps that I've got access to. Now, the children, when they're swiping, especially some of them who are still developing fine motor skills and things like that, find that quite a difficult menu to, yeah. to activate. Um, so being able to see all the apps they've got open, yeah, choose if they want to use them in full screen, split screen view, um, it's yeah. been really useful. And I'm yeah, thinking for us with our, you know, childproof iPad cases, they tend to be quite bulky and actually swiping from the edge of the screen can be really difficult. So things like the control center, app switcher, that can be quite a challenge. So that's, Absolutely. that's super helpful. And yeah. even the volume, you know, the volume controls. Yes. And quick and easy access to those um, has been really useful. Yeah. Martin, that's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for your time. And we're going to pass over to Lindsay now, a little bit further south in England um, than Edinburgh. But thank you so much for your time, and I'm sure I'll speak to you again soon. See you soon. Okay, next up, Lindsay is a teacher in Surrey, and she's going to share some really interesting tips for accessibility that she uses with her students. So, Lindsay, hi, and welcome to Smashing Apps. Hello, great to be here. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. Perfect. And then we can dive straight into the settings. So, one of the tools that we found to be really helpful with our students particularly following um, coming back after hybrid learning and post-pandemic is making use of one of the accessibility features in the hearing section of your settings under accessibility. So if we come in and go to our audio and visual options, there is an option here called background sounds, and this is going to play background sounds whenever you want, especially if you've got students that really need to focus or like working with headphones on, but you don't want them listening to music. Inside background sounds, you can adjust having these turned on or off. Uh, it's on now. And then we've got different sounds that we're able to go ahead and select from. So you've got balance noise, bright noise, dark noise, ocean, rain, and stream. All of these can be accessed by students either coming into the accessibility menu here or from the control center, which I'll show in just a moment. You also have the ability to adjust the uh, sound of the volume for when a uh, background sound is going to be played, as well as stopping the sound when the iPad is locked, which is really handy so that it doesn't keep on playing and using up the battery when students might be transitioning to a different class or when the iPads are sitting and not being used. So one of the ways that our students make use of this is by going into their control center and tapping on the option for accessibility. 
inside here, turning the background sounds on or off very quickly, just to be able to have their chosen sound to be played. And we have found that that's been really helpful for students when they're feeling very overstimulated with uh, a lot of background noise or a lot of chatter that's happening and they just want to be able to focus. They can put their headphones in or they can go sit somewhere in the corner and put those sounds on it. It just allows them to have something really, really clear to focus on that's calming and allows them then to proceed with what they need to be working on in class. That's fantastic. It's such a, a powerful feature that's kind of hidden quite yeah, quite away in settings. We used to use apps, you know, a few years ago that did a similar thing, like the white noise apps and stuff. So to have it built in is brilliant. Do you find that there's a particular sound that your children tend to opt for, or does it vary based on the child? I think it varies based on the child, but a lot tend to go for the the water sounds. So the sound of the stream or the river or the ocean, um, more so over the, the, the general white noise type of sounds. And I think that might stem from what they may have listened to as uh, as babies and as toddlers, if parents played those types of sounds in their bedroom when they went to sleep, they may prefer that type of sound now when they're older. That's interesting, isn't it? And I've got to be honest, I didn't realise about the accessibility shortcut in Control Centre as well. I, to be honest, I've never done that. So that's I've <laughs> learned something new there. So thank you. And that's a really handy piece of advice actually for all the um, accessibility tips we're going to share in this video, because I imagine that when you enable them, they'll all show up in that options panel. Absolutely, they will. So whatever you're turning on, such as assistive touch, guided access, all those great features right there in the control center. And it really helps um, the students to get to those tools when they need them uh, without having to navigate through multiple menus and sub menus within the settings. Yeah. Lindsay, that's absolutely fantastic. Short and sweet and super valuable information. Thank you so much for joining us on Smashing Apps. Okay, so next up, I'm joined by my good friend, Mark, who's a teacher up in Nottingham, and he's going to share an accessibility tip that perhaps has a special benefit for younger learners. So, Mark, over to you. Hi, um, I have taught reception for um, almost 13 years now, and this is a accessi accessibility feature that just proves it's beneficial to all ages, all stages, at any time in life. Um, <laughs> yes, so when... Too. When my young learners are creating on the iPad in Keynote or Pages um, and they want to find a particular shape, the dictation tool on the keyboard is um, is so useful. So um, if, if they're creating on a slide like this in Keynote, they go ahead and tap the shapes button here and mm -hmm. you can see it's organized by the categories. But there's a little... Um, little magnifying glass there which opens the search bar and the keyboard pops up so the children can just press that microphone and say the name of the shape or topic they're searching for farm and up pops all the shapes that they might need in their farm presentation so clever <laughs> simple super super effective though and obviously that works in in apps beyond just keynote anywhere you can type is that right Absolutely, yeah. That if you've enabled the um, the dictation, that is right there by the space bar um, in all apps right across the operating system. Incredible. I don't think we need to elaborate anymore because it's such a powerful tip and it is super, super simple. Mark, thank you very much for saying the word farm. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Jacob. Cheers. All right, so next up we're joined by Karen Irwin. She's a teacher in Newtown Abbey in Northern Ireland and she's going to share her top tip for accessibility, this time in Safari. Thank you, Jacob. So today I thought I would show you reader mode in Safari, which is a great tool for um, allowing the pupils to reduce a lot of the clutter that appears on websites that you might want to share with them. So I brought up a little example. I was trying to find a website that had plenty of clutter so that you could see the difference. Um, so let's say we're teaching the topic of Titanic and you would like your pupils to go and do a little bit of research about Titanic and the websites that you're coming up with, you really don't want them to be working out what the signs of itchy skin are or whether they <laughs> want to buy the next Levi's or control their gut. We don't want to see any of that while we're trying to focus no. on the topic. Um, also for those children who would get distracted by that lady popping up and in and off to the side, we don't want any of that. So reader mode is going to allow you to just focus on the content of the website and reduce a lot of the clutter that exists around it. So to do this, we are going to jump up to the top little um, address bar and we're just going to go to the two little A's up at the top. And in here, we've got a few different settings, but the one we want to look at today is show reader. 
So whenever we go into show reader, you can see immediately how much of the clutter has been reduced by doing that. Yeah. Take all the ads, we've taken away the banners along the bottom. We've really just focused in on the content of the website, which is what we want our pupils to be looking at. So within reader mode, you can see if I scroll down, we've lost everything. We've just got the text. We've just got the photographs. We've not got any ads. We've just got everything that we want our children to focus on. Whenever I go up back into reader mode again, up at the top then, I have a few options that are going to help children um, focus even better on what they're reading. So you might find that some children will read better on a dark background. So you That's... can change the background there for them. Maybe a slighter, lightly one, lighter one. Personally, I'm quite a fan of the cream one. It just seems to work well for my eyes. It's not yeah. too bright, not too dark. I quite like that one. Um, and you can change that. And then that's just going to give them a slightly easier screen to read off. Again, up in reader mode, then you have got the ability to change the font. So if I go into font here, you've got lots of different options here. And if I just change between them, you'll see how that quickly changes uh. the text for the people. So whatever age group sometimes it can be helpful to have like San Francisco I would use for our younger learners it's more of a, a generic font that they would recognize better yeah. also within reader mode then you can change the font size as well so for those people who are struggling to read it or just need to focus on a smaller amount of text mm -hmm. on the screen at one time you can go up into the font size up at the top here and I can just keep zooming in and I can increase the font size as I need to and then that is going to allow them just a shorter amount of text on the screen or yeah. just a bigger font if they need it. So that is reader mode in a nutshell. It's a great tool. Um, it's definitely one of my favorites in the classroom whenever I am wanting pupils to really just zone in on the content and not get distracted by everything else that's going on around them. So hopefully that's a useful tool for you. Yeah, Karen, that's fantastic. Thank you. I think one of the problems of the internet today is there is so much clutter and so many other things and links to buy this and other websites and other stories that it's overwhelming, isn't it? And I think actually this is a really simple but effective tip to, to reduce some of that visual clutter. Absolutely, yeah. It's a good one. Am I, am I right in thinking we could use it in, in a split screen mode as well? So you could have it on one side while you're doing perhaps notating on the other side yes. and other things. Yes, of course. Yes, you could have that and then be making your little fact file about Titanic. Yeah. Going along this one as well. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. A really lovely short but sweet tip. And I think they're the most effective ones as well because it's something that we can all use you know, tomorrow we go into our classroom. So Karen, thank you so much for joining us on Smashing Apps. It's much appreciated. Not a problem. Thanks very much for having me, Jacob. All right. Thank you so much, everyone who shared a tip already. There's one last tip, and it's one that I'm going to share myself. Now, you probably know already that on the iPad, you can change the text size on your screen. For example, if I were to go into Settings and then find Display and Brightness, on here, there's the option to change text size. Now, when you change the text size here, it will change in every app on the iPad, and it will do that across your whole device. But sometimes what you actually want is to change the text size in perhaps one app rather than all of the apps. So I'm going to put my size there back to default in the middle. And then what we can do is simply go to the Control Center options. And from here, you have all the different buttons and shortcuts that are in Control Center. I'm just going to scroll down and we can add other ones here if we'd like to. In fact, you saw people like Martin mention this earlier. I'm going to add text size. What this now means, if I pull down into Control Center, I have a new toggle there where I can simply change the text size super easily. In fact, you can see it changing in the background there. But the key differentiator here is that I'm changing the text size in the Settings app only. If I jump across to All Apps, I can make a general system level change. But actually, if I go to Settings only, I can set that text size just for that one app. So what that means is if I come out of settings, my text size is normal elsewhere. And if I perhaps jump into the calendar, my text size there is also normal. If I pull down into control center, I can then choose calendar only. I can increase my text size to make it more legible, but it hasn't affected other apps on my iPad. It's a really simple little tip, but one that I find quite useful. Of course, it works the other way as well. Making the text size smaller means you get more information on the page too. So it works in two different ways there. I really hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Smashing Apps, all about accessibility tips for your iPad. Hopefully you've seen one or two little things here, maybe more, that would help you or your learners make that device even more accessible to you. Of course, if you've missed it, there have been two previous episodes of Smashing Apps in the last two nights. We've had a creativity one on Tuesday night, and then last night we had one all about coding. So if you want to catch up on those, 
there'll be links down below. And of course, please do subscribe down to this YouTube channel if you'd like more smashing apps or more iPad quick lesson content for your classroom. I'll be making more videos as time goes by, and this is where you can catch up on all of them. In the meantime, I'll meet you over on the Apple Education Community website, where there's loads of discussions going on all about the Festival of Learning and hundreds and hundreds of other things to help you make the most of those devices that you have in your classroom. And that's it from me. I'll see you all soon. Bye.